Hi guys, Don from the MS Guide. I'm here with somebody who you'll recognize shortly, Rebecca Scott. Rebecca has a lot of uh, additional needs that I do when it comes to MS. And Rebecca's going on a trip. So she's going to share with us some of her hints and tips for, in this case, flying, but generally traveling, how to sort yourself out and ensure that it's a hassle-free and enjoyable experience. If you've got any questions, please, please ask them in the comments. Rebecca, I know you're going on this great trip and I want to use this opportunity to use all your knowledge and expertise to help other people who have additional needs with their travel. Planning, this is the big mm -hmm. one. Can you take us through your top planning tips? Because I was blown away at how much you have to do. It is a hassle and in my experience, it's totally been worth it. So here's what I do. Book a flight. They're probably going to charge you for a seat. I've tried fighting that to no avail, but my goodness, if you have more energy for it than I do, please do fight the charges because it's absurd. So figuring out how close I am to the toilet is important. I prefer not to be right on top of the toilet because that's going to be annoying. People are going to bang into your seat the whole time. I like to be on the aisle so I don't have to climb over people to go to the toilet. Um, so these are the things that work for me. The last step before you hit like buy the ticket usually is do you need any special accommodations? Do you need a wheelchair at the airport? Will you be bringing your own wheelchair, etc., etc., etc.? The best travel advice I can give you, if you can afford it or get insurance to pay for it, is uh, the Rolls International. A uh, rollator that converts into a transport chair is the very best because it means when you feel up to walking, you can walk. When you don't, you can be pushed. So you can essentially get it, you know, it's a seat as well. So you can be pushed yeah. in it, it's a seat, and you can use it as a rollator. So we've planned our seat, we've booked our seat, we've told the airport you need assistance. Um, mm -hmm. You've them once enough. No, once is not <laughs> enough. When you arrive at the airport and check in for your flight, tell the people at the gate. Now, if you're arriving with a wheelchair, they'll probably see, oh, look, a wheelchair. But explain precisely what you need. Mm -hmm. um, here's what I need in the airport. I need your chair. I need my own chair. My companion will push my chair. or We need someone else to push the chair. So many levels of variation. Um, I need help getting to my seat. I don't need help getting to my seat on the airplane. Lay it out clearly. Most people are good at heart, but most people don't understand our needs and they will make assumptions. I think it could stand to really complicate your life if you allow people to make assumptions. So therefore, like you say, tell them what you need. Yeah, just speak up. And if somebody, you know, is not listening to you, repeat yourself with a smile on your face as best you can. Again, it's a hassle, but it's worth it. Tell us about the packing, Rebecca. Yeah, so there is one rule with my packing, uh, and it is catheters first. <laughs> because I'm going to be incredibly uncomfortable uh, if I do not pack catheters and have plenty available. Just for clarity, I mean, I. As far as I'm aware, catheters help you pee. You can have different ones. Um, sometimes you have ones that are through a hole in you. Sometimes you have one that you use down where you need to pee near your urethra. You need what you need. Ain't no one going to be just carrying this around going, oh, let me just get this exactly. one from the galley. Put some stuff in your carry-on baggage. Oh, golly, absolutely. At the very least, give yourself mm -hmm. a day supply of catheters in your carry-on baggage because if things get lost, damaged, whatever, at least you've got a tiny bit of insurance to start sorting things out at the other end rather yeah. than, oh, my God. Prescription drugs go in that category, too. Yep. And um, my prescription drugs uh, all get packed on my carry-on. I don't want to be left without them. Uh, they're all symptom modifiers, but yep. still my body is accustomed to having them. Getting them when I am in another place will be a huge extra hassle. So pack your drugs in your carry-on. I, I would add to that, I used to be on beta interferon and compaction back in the day mm -hmm. when I traveled. I had letters from my consultant and my nurse saying, this man's not a drug smuggler, or he's not got a load of injectable drugs. Well, I have, but they're legal ones because 
some countries you turn up in and if you sort of unwill uh you know unroll a load of injectables at customs they're gonna look at you slightly askance so be prepared if you've got any drugs which might cause your host country issues what else when you're packing you know you mentioned something about a list is that yeah so i have um i wish i had it in front of me although it really doesn't matter it is a spreadsheet so we've got drugs we've got you said make a list which is mm -hmm. far better than me because you know um lists are i think are good things but it's something i just don't pay enough attention to what else would you say that you definitely want to make sure you have with you? It comes down to whatever makes you as comfortable as possible. And although this isn't a packing trip, it is a clothing tip. Again, if continence is a concern for you, even a little bit, wear stretchy clothes. Like I wear leggings and a dress so that if I need to get pants down quickly, I can do it. My only equivalent to that is when I've been drunk, it's like fumbling with button. I had a button fly. I've resolved never to wear a button fly on my <laughs> jeans when I go out drinking because it's just, it can either lead to slightly awkward oversights or um, when you think you've done it. Oh, but you're right, getting it, and you're like, now will be a great time as you're faddling with these blinking buttons and then you're just like i'm just going to tear them off in a second another thing i would say because i have in my shower i have a stick on handle just for because you're going to specify accessible rooms uh mm -hmm. as you are going to with accessible airline tickets but folks your idea of accessible and somebody else's idea of accessible might differ and uh having a stick on one of those suction cup handles that i can't remember i bought ages ago or or if you need a particular suction cup, you know, those bath mats with better traction on so you don't yep. just take a dive. If they're important, pack them. I mean, so much of this is common sense if you think about it, but it's still, we're hearing it from an expert. What about the trip? A lot of us who have MS are heat sensitive. And then some of us are lucky and we grow into cold sensitivity as well. So Ooh, wearing right. layers, um, you know, having a cardigan, having a jacket, you're not dumb you know what layers are like oh, well i mean i've frozen my backside off on a plane before because i oh, forgot yeah. Yeah. you know because it's generally air conditioned quite cool and the air crew uh i'll tell you this because my mum was a stewardess my dad was a pilot they can vary the cabin temperature so they can make you sleep here or more awake by changing the cabin temperature as well so and this air condition which dries you out hand cream mm -hmm. i always bring hand cream yep me too and I mean, the number one thing, and we've said this a couple of times, is if you need help, ask for help. That's brilliant, Rebecca. So we've knocked off the planning, the packing, the actual doing of the trip. Now, I remember you telling me about another trip you took, and it made me think traveling's fun, but traveling is not home. It rarely is home. So. And some of these countries, accessibility down some little back alley in France or Greece, if that's how you get to the restaurant. You have a Greek experience, don't you, that made me smile? Tell me I what do. It made me smile, too. I went on a trip to Athens um, with my company in the fall. And uh, the woman who was planning everything said, I found the perfect location for a dinner, except it's up three flights of stairs. And I was like, well, can't do that. And she was like, yes. And I talked to the manager of the restaurant and he has some lovely Greek boys who would be happy to carry you up those <laughs> stairs. Yes, please. Are you up for that? And I was like, am I up? Yes, yes I am. I would be delighted to have lovely Greek boys carry me up three flights of stairs. I can imagine you going, don't, don't rush that, just take this slowly. Exactly. The whole time we were in Athens, uh, one of the least accessible cities I've ever been in. Um, and when I went to restaurants and asked where the restroom was and or toilet, bathroom, whatever you call it in your part of the world, they would look at my wheelchair and look at me and they'd say, I'm so sorry. And then often another lovely Greek boy would escort me down the stairs, up the stairs, whatever it was. And it wasn't ideal, but it was kind of funny 
and a little bit fun. And um, I think as much as you can, if you can lean into delight over frustration, you're going to get your needs met and you're going to have a better time. This is confirmation bias. If you see the worst in everything, you will get the worst in everything. It's guaranteed. Well, no, I'll throw out one more bright sure. side travel tip, which is that a lot of museums, a lot of transit systems uh, have a disabled rate. Um, so take advantage of that. I was shocked the first time I went to Rome. Look at how fancy I am. I've been to Rome more than once. I went on one of those hop on, hop, hop off bus tours around the city and I was walking with the cane and when I got there, the man just kind of waved his hand and I was like, oh no, a cripple's not allowed on this bus. He was like, no, come, come. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, that's amazing. So. Yeah. But it's very much that speaks to how they view it. You know, it's not the same way we do, but I suppose it's like, don't be perpetually offended. We all know there's people that everything's wrong and against them. And yeah, yes. if you don't know them, I'm sad to say you might be that person. But generally, I think if you've got the um, class and the taste to be watching us on this, you're probably not. I really appreciate you sharing this with me. Happy travels, everyone. Believe hey, me, it's worth it. Happy travels to you too. And thanks a lot for coming on again. We'll see you soon.